Aboriginal people and Torres Strait Islander people are advised that this video contains images and voices of people who may have passed away. I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land we're visiting today, Gunganji country. We pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. We acknowledge that this land always was and always will be Gunganji country. One year welcome to Yarrabah State School. Over the next two segments, we're going to share a snapshot of how curriculum leaders and teachers here at Yarrabah State School are making the Australian curriculum accessible for their learners by providing the curriculum in a way that is contextually and culturally relevant. It's about the continuous improvement in providing access to and the teaching, learning and assessment of the Australian curriculum to ensure success and well-being for all students in an inclusive education system. So our school is located 57 kilometres southeast of Cairns and caters to a mainly Indigenous population uh, across three separate campuses and uh, that includes kindergarten, uh, primary school and secondary school. So the local language spoken by the people of Yarrabah is Yarri lingo and this obviously influences our approach to curriculum and pedagogy, particularly as English is a, an additional language or dialect for most of our learners. When planning for the provision of the whole curriculum, we consider our students and our context. For example, we've decided to provide a learning area approach for the arts. This allows our arts teacher to be flexible in his approach to teaching contextualised art units based on student interests and local events. Provide the languages program through the Language Revival Learner Pathway. Students in years 3 to 10 learn the Gungai language which has been built alongside Yarrabah's local elders group. This work is led by our traditional owner and languages teacher Nathan Shriver and our teaching assistant Touche Gray. We also have a specialist Hass teacher who, uh, in consultation with one of the school's local teachers, has created contextualised Hass units for the early years that allow us to meet the standard in a context that is relevant to our learners. When we are planning our year and BAM plans, we consider all of our students and their learning needs and how we can cover all aspects of the achievement standard. We provide time for cohorts to meet to develop these year or BAM plans and this is done during our collaboration meetings. It's during this process that teachers look at existing C2C assessments and adopt and adapt to suit their learners while maintaining the integrity of the year or BAM plan. We map all of our summative assessments back to the achievement standard and then we look at those summative assessments and make adjustments to suit our students and our context. In some cases, we adjust the timing of the unit so the topics align, ensuring we can build background knowledge, content and appropriate vocabulary, and it gives the students the opportunity to transfer that knowledge across multiple learning areas. Currently, we have a whole school focus on moderation to build assessment literacy with our teachers. To determine the focus of our moderation processes, we use data to inform our decision making. As a curriculum leadership team, we decided to focus on English, particularly on the receptive mode. We moderate to develop a shared understanding of the curriculum, the pedagogical practices that we know are effective for our learners and the assessment. I facilitate collaboration meetings with our teachers and we engage in before moderation activities to plan how our units of work can be modified so that all students can access the Australian curriculum content in a way that is relevant to them. These weekly cohort meetings provide an opportunity for our staff to engage in authentic conversations of how they can modify assessment and unit plans for students in our context. It is also during this process that we identify and highlight key language skills that require explicit teaching for our IEALD students. This is to ensure language awareness is embedded in teaching practices, not standalone. So we use our collaborations to unpack each unit of work and then we're able to get a shared understanding of these achievement standards and then select appropriate texts and resources. So for example, when we're planning an English unit, we look at the recommended C2C texts and see which best suit the learning needs of our students. And we also use other appropriate texts in order to compare and use standard Australian English and Yarri lingo. If our students need practice with past tense and plurals, for example, we select texts that enable us to teach these skills. 
providing students with the required curriculum and differentiating teaching and learning to meet all students' needs is our core business. Schools do this by recording their decisions about how curriculum is made culturally and contextually relevant to their learners in their three levels of planning and also by using moderation processes to align curriculum with effective pedagogy, assessment and reporting. In the next segment, we will look at setting students up for success by ensuring they have access to the curriculum and a variety of strategies to support their learning.